So uh, the last couple days was less pain. I mean, I had a little bit of arm pain yesterday towards the end of the evening, but not too bad. Released demons this morning. It was like, wow. Definitely had some digestive um, action, which is good. It means that my body was converting microbes and replacing one for another and all that. But through that, I was reading the Project 2025 and I was reading Agenda 47 and even just going more in depth in some of the, the detailed tenets of Project 2025 and Agenda 47. And they're both interlocked, though I know that the platform, our dear leader who will be coming into office most likely, doesn't want to go through the hard portions of it. So he picks the highlights, which is fine. If you want to know <laughs> deeper, than what is on the White House page, then you look at Project 2025, regardless if he knows what that is or not. Who's he? The future president. Okay, I don't imagine we'll have anyone but Trump in office this next time around. So if you are resisting any kind of conservative regime, it's time maybe you realize that the writing's on the wall. You know, I, of course I can't predict the future, but you might as well get used to the idea at some point. The tables are going to turn. Okay, the tables are going to turn. And so somebody asked me if I was for Trump. And like I even back then when I was taken up for him, back in like 2020, before the elections, you know, it's about respecting who your president is. That's really what it comes down to, because they both are there for a role. The Democrat Republicans are there to develop a role, develop a resistance, to understand the human and the human condition, do all the experiments and understand the cultures and the lifestyles and the belief systems. And then eventually there's going to be one type of lifestyle and belief system that the system is going to uphold and what the system is going to um, put out there as a universal. And either you assimilate or you resist. And one of the biggest, one of the most deadliest ways of, of being part of the resistance is having a family and a child and even a dependent, like an animal, because then you will be under um, surveillance. You will be um, regulated by the government. And so if you want to have some kind of freedom Whatever that means, don't have a family in in, a, in in the upcoming society. Don't have a family. Because you will have to be subject to everything that entails what the system wants for the children. Remember, save the children can mean not having any. So you don't have to save them from an abuser. Save the children could also mean um, giving them a humane way out. Save the children could mean putting them in a home that is a relatively balanced home. Okay, so save the children can be a lot of th lot of different things. So, so my husband and I were watching these videos last night from the slums of like the Philippines and Asia and China and Vietnam and India, and he was pretty surprised on such squalid conditions some people live in the Philippines. He was like, "Oh my God!" And there were children everywhere. There were children everywhere. There was animals everywhere, children, you know, elderly adults just, I mean, watch those videos that are on my Facebook. And you're just like, oh my God, how do they live in that? How do they be happy? It's called happy land, right? That's the irony of it. And I'm just like, yeah. Why do you think they want to guide reproduction carefully? There's so much suffering with so many children. These kids don't have, you know, a stable place. They live in dirty, squalid conditions. They don't get education. They're just existing. There, there is no, they're not purposed for anything. And so in America, now we have seen what happens when you have, you don't have a two parent household. We know what happens in America when you have uh, anomalistic backgrounds that um, cause resistance from other people and there's no balance of, of positive and negative. And yeah, a two parent household has a positive and negative type of effect that will keep the balance and so the kid can play off both and figure out how he or she is going to 
make their way in the world. And then the, the state will come in and regulate how that kid is going to be raised, what they're going to be raised with, what kind of religion, and it, probably the Bible. Um, the, the, the separation of church and state, eh, probably not going to happen if they're putting in um, the Bible and Ten Commandments in the classrooms, which, okay. I don't have any kids, so I don't care. When you have kids, now it's about what the community wants. Not what you want, but what the community wants. What the system wants out of those children. What they want them to turn into. Okay? And that is a platform. That's a background. That is a jumping off point. It's a point of balance. And then as far as resistance down the road for that kid, well, I don't know. It just depends. And so this will be interesting to see how this conservative regime that most likely is going to come in, how it's going, how they're going to implement this. And we're going to see all types of resistance because you know, the Republicans don't, a lot of Republican people do not like the public health therapies, but that's going to be in the future. They're going to lay the groundwork. The groundwork's going to be laid the next four years. And then 2030, you already see what the, um, the VACCINES is scheduled and what they're going to implement on a global basis. You may not see mandates the next four years. You might, you might not, I don't know, but the groundwork's gonna be laid for the executive office to roll out some pretty, some would say draconian ways of doing things. At this point, I don't have any kids. I don't have any animals. It's just me. So I'm not really affected. Yeah, I'll be affected by people resisting out there and dealing with people and all that shit. But, you know, if I'm not bringing in something for the society to go and train and regulate, then, and I'm, I'm self-regulating, then I have no issue. It's those that bring in things that cannot self-regulate. Those people who cannot self-regulate themselves will be subject to the system. So then, then if you are a drug addict, a dealer, a human trafficker, if you are, you know, always looking for prostitutes and you don't have a clean background, yeah, he's going to drain the swamp, regardless of your affiliation with Democrat or Republican. You better have a clean background. And so reading some of these tenets of the Agenda 47 and Project 2025, oh yeah, they're cleaning up society. And this is when you're going to be like, dude, it, you know, the whole cannabis thing, holy shit. It better be legal in your town. You better have a prescription for it. It better be through doctor's orders. I don't even know if, I mean, they said a distributable possession is what they're going to go after. But again, not everything is, I mean, to what, what does that mean? Because you can distribute a gram, <laughs> you know, and sell that. So that's the thing is that, um, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. So this is why I'm trying to warn you now that the system is will be cleaning itself up. And it's, it'll be the rule of law, not, not the law of the jungle that will govern the conduct of nations. That's in the Georgia Guidestones. The rule of law. And George Bush Sr., who has died, he put that out there in the 1980s, 1990s. The rule of law, not the law of the jungle, that will govern the conduct of nations. And when we are successful, and we will be, and then I forget all that. But I remember that speech that I saw on a YouTube video back, I don't know, 10 years ago. But remember, we all were raised in resistance. Some of us were raised in Democrat households. Others were raised in a Republican household. And they were made to go and battle it out with each other, resist each other. And so you saw so much of my resistance come to surface and then leave. Come to surface and then leave. What is it? The truth happens uh, through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as self-evident. That's Schopenhauer's quotes of the truth. And so if you can get through the stages earlier before it's implemented, then you might stand a chance so you won't be so shocked and traumatized when things roll out and you're like, what the fuck? You have to expect it. So get all your resistance and your ridicule out now. Because remember, you've seen me the last few days when I discovered Project 2025. I don't even know that existed because I've been staying away from politics lately because it's just so much rhetoric. I'm listening to my husband's videos that he's listening to of all the people talking about this, that, no, no, no. He's telling me and I'm just like, I don't want to hear it. But I mean, I'm going to have to. 
because it's going to happen. He, he's he's going to get an offer. So I'm thinking like, oh shit, he's going to be a scapegoat. Well, I don't know what he knew when he knew it. I don't, I, I don't know really anything about the suit except for whatever he was put out there, you know, on TV. And then what he did in New York with all the real estate. And of course, what's going on the last, you know, eight, nine years, seven years, six years. So, you know, I, but now it's like, it, it's, it's becoming more real. And then when I discovered Project 2025 through this guy, Cryptic Shine. Okay, so check him out. He has a page and everything. And he said something about, you know, I'm more afraid of Project 2025. I'm like, what? What the hell is that? And I was like, oh, and so I watched those videos. I'm like, oh, shit. And then Audrey posted Agenda 47. And I'm like, oh, shit, those two are conjoined. But then I look on the White House page. It says Agenda 47, but nothing about Project 2025. And then even he said he doesn't know anything about 2025. And okay, fine. Would you believe him? I don't believe any politician. But again, remember, they're on a platform of not trying to scare people. Because I'll tell you, even the stuff back when Obama put stuff in place and the NDAA and, and everything and, and um, federalizing so many of the public resources and all that stuff, well, public resource, federalizing almost everything. But, you know, there's a lot, people were, but we, we voted him in. We were like, oh, wow, he's our hero. Remember back then, Obama, the left were like, he's our hero because we're tired of the right in the bush and 9-11. But there's a lot more things that he didn't talk about that were being put through that the right wing were resisting back during the conspiracy world. Well, the times have flipped. There's going to be that, oh, Trump is our hero, which I understand. And there's things that are going to come through on the back end that you're not going to be totally aware of, or it's separated through different doctrines that you can claim plausible deniability. That'll also be put in place. And I'm not saying it's bad or good. It's just how it, it's how it's always been. That's why we have left and right. That's why we have both sides. So you have someone to blame, someone to resist. You have you have a little bit of wiggle room to go back and forth, jockey back and forth. But eventually, there'll be no more jockeying back and forth. Those two worlds of climate change and a conservative regime coming through, traditions resisting climate change, it's going to be interesting to see what cream is going to rise to the top and what shaft is going to fall to the bottom. And so that's kind of how... America was built. That was what we were built on. That was the whole point of America. And so we were separated by two opposing forces. And now finally we're going to come together called a new world order. And so if you are like, like I said, if you're an expat in other countries and they close the borders on some of us, at some point the system is going to close the borders and they're going to do math. I mean, they already showed you. That's why I'm reading these things. Word while I'm reading it, like paragraph, paragraph. I don't want to today. I'm not going to read anything word for word. I'm paraphrasing right now, but um, but what did I read yesterday? Was hold on, there was a forward. Oh, yeah, I read that. Hold on, okay. But the one that I wanted to, yeah was about the um, mandate for leadership. The conservative promise, number one, restore the family as a centerpiece of American life and protect our children. And sometimes that means not having children or having the state in your uterus. And yes, if you get pregnant, if a woman gets pregnant and she had a fling with someone, she can't get an abortion. To, they're not going to make it easy for you to get an abortion. As far as the male's responsibility, I don't know. And that's what I'm saying. Men, now you have to be very, very careful where you put your penis because you could end up, if you're not legal-minded, to figure out you had a contract before. We're having sex. We're not trying to have a family. I said that, and she's okay with that, and I am not responsible for this. And I know there has to be, because men, men do sometimes walk away. Sometimes men relinquish their, their what do you call it? Their responsibility. They, 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 they basically get, well, maybe that's, yeah. Men could do that. They have. They give up all rights to that child. And when you give up all rights to that child, then why would you be responsible for child support? 
Why would you be, why are you even saying this? Because that happens. Do you know there are women that are out there that are, that have died because they were pregnant and the man didn't know that maybe there was another way to go around it without having, it was, why would he kill her if she was pregnant? Unless he didn't want the responsibility of the future. And that's kind of a, a, a sad situation. And so we have to give these options to men that if they got a plan <laughs> and understand the ramifications of their sexual choices. So, yeah, you know, men have to be very careful where they put their penis because, and women, and women too, you know, allowing men to, 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 to do stuff because they will be forced to have a kid. And now they, you know, unless they give up the rights and they give their child to the state, which will be the option. They're, they're going to be stuck having to bring that baby to term. And that may not be healthy for her. Even though it's not a, I mean, even though it's not a high risk pregnancy, allegedly, but anytime a woman has a baby, it takes a major toll on all of her body parts. That's what the left was trying to say. That's why the abortion clinics were there. That's why Planned Parenthood was there because they know when a woman goes through pregnancy, it taxes the hell out of her. But there's responsibility on both ends but then they're taking away the porn the the right the conservatives saying okay we're tired of the porn we're tired of all the sexualization of children from grade school all the way up they're tired of all that stuff i mean who's going to teach these kids about sex i don't know how that's going to work out because when your hormones are raging and maybe there's incest and child abuse and molestation that happen in the family and these kids are like oh god I don't know. And so this is going to be very interesting to, to see. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do it. That's why I don't want a kid. Because the responsibility of having a child now and going forward. Oh, my God. And if you are, again, you know, a left or a right person, afraid of the state in your uterus or afraid of of the public health therapies and all the well baby checkups and then you know all that stuff oh my god so this is going to be interesting but yeah the um so the next conservative president must get to work pursuing the true priority of politics and so um in many ways, the entire point of centralizing political power is to subvert the family. Ah. Its purpose is to replace people's natural loves and loyalties with unnatural ones. You see this in the popular left-wing aphorism. aphorism. Government is simply the name we give to the things we choose to do together. But in real life, most of the things people do together have nothing to do with the government. These are the mediating institutions that serve as the building blocks of a healthy society. Marriage, family, work, church, and school. Volunteering. The name real people give to the things we do together is community, not government. So it's ironic that they're gonna, government's going to force people into these situations. If someone doesn't want to be part of the, what is it, the marriage, the family, the work, and the church, and the school... And the government forces them. <laughs> so, I mean, it is what it is. But I'm just, I mean, I don't, I don't have a kid, so I'm not worried about it. So our lives are full of interwoven, overlapping communities. And our individual and collective happiness depends upon them. But the most important community in each of our lives and the life of the nation is the family. Assuming that family is not toxic. And that's the key thing. But, hey, if you're going to have a child... And you're having a child with a man that you don't really know, and that man is toxic, or that woman is toxic. Today, the American family is in crisis. 40% of all children are born to unmarried mothers, including more than 70% of black children. There is no government program that can replace the hole in a child's soul cut out by the absence of a father. Fatherlessness is one of the principal sources of American poverty. Crime, mental illness, teen suicide, substance abuse, rejection of the church, and high school dropouts. Now, I was a high school dropout, and I had both families in place, but I had other issues going on. So many of the problem, problems government programs are designed to solve, but can't are ultimately problems created by the crisis of marriage and the family. 
The world has never seen a thriving, healthy, free, and prosperous society where most children grow up without their married parents. That's probably true. Go look at the slums of the Philippines. If current trends continue, we are heading towards social implosion. Furthermore, the next conservative president must understand that using government alone to respond to symptoms of the family crisis is a dead end. It's probably true, yes. Federal power must instead be wielded to reverse the crisis and rescue America's kids from the familial breakdown. The conservative promise, the conservative promise includes dozens of specific policies to accomplish this existential task. Some are obvious and long-standing goals like eliminating the marriage penalties and federal welfare programs and the tax code and installing work requirements for food stamps. But we must go further. It's time for policymakers to elevate family authority, formation, and cohesion as their top priority and even use government power, including through the tax code, to restore the American family. Today, the left is threatening the tax-exempt status of churches and charities that reject woke progressivism. They will soon turn to Christian schools and clubs with the same totalitarian, totalitarian intent. The next conservative president must make the institution of America civil society hard targets for woke culture warriors. This starts with deleting the term sexual orientation and gender identity, SOGI, diversity, Equity and Inclusion, DEI, Gender, Gender Equality, Gender Equity, Gender Awareness, Gender Sensitive, Abortion, Reproductive Health, Reproductive Rights, and any other term used to deprive Americans of their First Amendment right out of every federal rule, agency, regulation, contract, grant, regulation, and piece of legislation that exists. And so, wow. Interesting. So pornography manifested today in the omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and sexualization of children, for instance, is not a political Gordian knot, inextricably binding up disparate claims about free speech, property rights, sexual liberation, and child welfare. It has no claim to First Amendment protection. Ah, yeah, that's true. It... Its purveyors are child predators and and misogynistic exploiters of women. Yeah, Hugh Hafner, Larry Flint. Remember the 1960s? This was a huge experiment, okay, just so you know. Their product is as addictive as any illicit drug and, and, and as psychologically destructive as any crime. Pornography should be outlawed. Oh, I agree. The people who produced and distributed it should be imprisoned. Educators and public librarians who purvey it should be classed as registered sex offenders. And telecommunications and technology firms that facilitate its spread should be shuttered. In our schools, the questions of parental authority over their children's education is a simple one. School serves parents, not the other way around. That is, of course, the best argument for universal school choice a goal all conservative and conservative presidents must pursue. But even before we achieve that long-term goal, parents' rights as their children's primary educators should be non-negotiable in American schools. States, cities and counties, school board, union, bosses, principals, and teachers who disagree should be immediately cut off from federal funds. Oh, so you cannot bring in certain things that the parents don't want their kids to learn. Okay, so if you choose to teach your child whatever, that's fine. But when you go to school, it's not up to the school to teach your child things that you don't want them to learn. That includes sexual education. Okay. The noxious tenets of critical race theory and gender ideology should be excised from curricula in every public school in the country. These theories poison our children who are taught, on the one hand, to affirm that the color of their skin fundamentally determines our identity and even their moral status, while the other hand, while the other they are taught to deny the very creatureliness that that inheres in being human and consists in accepting the givenness of our nature as men men or women. 
allowing parents or physicians to reassign the sex of a minor is child abuse. I would agree with that and must end. But again, you know, the way, the way maturation is happening so quickly, some of these kids are realizing their sexuality way early on. And I don't know how that's going to work, but what are you going to do? For public institutions to use taxpayer dollars to declare the superiority or inferiority of certain race, sexes, and religions is a violation of the Constitution and civil rights law and cannot be tolerated by any government anywhere in the country. But the pro-family promises expressed in this book and central to the next conservative president's agenda must go further than the tradition narrow definition of family issues. Every threat to family stability must be confronted. This resolve should color each of our policies. Consider our approach to big tech. The worst of these companies prey on children, like drug dealers, to get them addicted to their mobile apps. Many Silicon Valley executives famously don't let their own kids have smartphones. They nevertheless make billions of dollars addiction, addicting other people's children to theirs. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms are specifically designed to create the digital dependencies that fuel mental illness and anxiety to fray children's bonds with their parents and siblings. Federal policy cannot allow this industrial scale child abuse to continue. Finally, conservatives should gratefully celebrate the greatest pro-family win in a generation, overturning Roe v. Wade, a decision that for five decades made a mockery of our Constitution and facilitated the deaths of tens of millions of unborn children. But the Dobbs decision is just beginning. Now, here's the thing. When you develop a child who has deficiencies, yeah, they're going to be cyborged, but what are you going to do? Okay, this is the new world. Conservatives in the states and in Washington, including the next conservative administration, should push as hard as possible to protect the unborn in every jurisdiction in America. In particular, the next conservative president should work with Congress to enact the most robust protections for the unborn that Congress will support while deploying existing federal powers to protect innocent life and vigorously complying with statutory bans on the federal funding of abortion. Conservatives should ardently pursue these pro-life and pro-family policies while recognizing the many women who find themselves in immensely difficult and often tragic situations and the heroism of every choice to become a mother. Alternative options to abortion, especially adoption, should receive federal and state support. In summary, the next president has a moral responsibility to lead the nation in restoring a culture of life in America again. Remember, life has a lot of different meanings. I'm pro-life, but I walk away from death, and I face my suffering, and I release the demons, and I stay alive. The family is going to develop the life, develop a platform, and if that child is allowed to redirect when they become an adult, and they can, hopefully they can if they get that allowance. But yes, I came from a two-parent two household. Um, most of, a lot of my peers were from two-parent households. Some obviously had divorced situations. But yes, the, the proper foundation is a balanced two-person household with rules and regulations and boundaries and not to be spoiled so much. But again, that's up to each parent to figure that out. And they go to school with learning the way the system wants them to learn certain things. And then at home, they learn whatever. And if, if the home issues bleed into the school issues, then the state comes in and figures out what the hell's going on. And that's how everything's going to be funneled. And as far as homeschool, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, but this is just the beginning. This is going to be the framework. And this will be interesting. Again, I'm not... I don't have any kids, so I really don't have too much of an investment of how this is going to go. But I can say from my personal experience, having a two-parent household helps. It helps with balancing back and forth. It helps with knowing you're going to get your needs met. It helps with stability. And so then men and women need to be very careful who they allow into their body, mind, and spirit. And again, you'll have choices. 
And so we'll see how this happens. We'll see what happens, how this is going to work out, because there's so many different scenarios that could take place. And again, if you have boys that are hot to trot, figure out legally what they need to do before they get into sexual relationships with girls out there. Because once these girls get pregnant, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. I'm going to go, but I wanted to read that. All right. Bye.